Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. So March is considered this month of emotional processing and not just renewal and rebirth for so many reasons. Although it is a month of dynamic renewal and rebirth, okay, for so many reasons. Not only is March the anticipated month where we celebrate the astrological new year, Aries season, and the spring equinox, which falls in the new moon in Aries this year, but March 2023 features a lot of astro activity in Aries, in addition to many power planets changing signs after years and months of being in the same sign. There's Mars, which has been in Gemini for seven, seven months, changing signs, and the power outer planets Saturn and Pluto finally change signs, which are the most talked about powerful transits ushering in dynamic changes, defining the next 20 years for the world, okay? And so for a full astrology breakdown, including psychic oracle insight, on how Saturn and Pluto are expected to bring changes in the world and in your personal lives, right? Um, you know, like higher lessons, spiritual advice on the sort of tests that these planetary changes will bring for you according to your zodiac sign. Check out the new video posted on this channel and linked below. But if you don't know, Saturn is the planet of karmic rewards for your efforts, for better or worse, and it forces you to be accountable, to mature, and to gain mastery, and it will do so by placing challenges and to find limitations in the areas of your life related to whatever sign and house it is in, right? So that you are forced to learn spiritual and practical lessons for growth. And it has been in Aquarius for the last three years and finally moves into Pisces on March 7th. But because Saturn was in Capricorn prior to Aquarius since 2017 and is the ruler of both, Saturn uh, being the ruler of both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? While Pluto has been in Capricorn, which is also ruled by Saturn, right, since 2008, we have actually been in a Saturnian age of rulership for the last 15 years, okay? So truly, if things have felt tough for you in a particular area of your life for the for the last 10 to 15 years, right? You're not crazy. <laughs> and it is exactly because of this heavy Saturnian age influence. And it's been really hard for cardinal immutable signs in particular, right? And, you know, this energy has brought societal karmas to the surface, right? In a way that we can't ignore anymore. So, Pluto finally enters Aquarius on March 23rd, just two days after the astrological new year and spring equinox new moon in Aries, which it will form a sextile with, right? So this is a powerful new moon. And then two days after that, on March 25th, Mars finally exits out of Gemini after being in the sign for seven months, right? Since August 2022. So those tidbits alone just give you a taste of why Mar March's uh, astrology is hyped, is anticipated, and considered dynamic, right? Because it's going to bring some climaxes, some closures, and just some energetic shifts for some cycles to end and begin, right? And it'll launch us into some renewal, growth, innovation, and big changes in the world that really sets a trajectory, right, for this new year and beyond. So take a moment, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel. Cozy in as we get into some UA light celestial insight from the stars, right? And the cards related to the collective astrology predictions, and then your individual horoscope and psychic tarot insight, right? On challenges, um, what you don't see coming, and spiritual advice for March 2023. So the energetic theme of March really is about us being at this crossroads, right? And where, you know, we're going to experience illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and ultimately some karmic closures 
hopefully, right? Um, and we can think of March as both this month of emotional release and sobering reflection surrounding these important questions of how did you get here, right? And what happened to certain hopes and dreams and, you know, these also these moments of excitement surrounding where you will go from here and where you can go from here with all that you know now from the last 15 years of change, challenges, limitations, and hardships in your personal life, but also the world. The world has changed so much in relationship to these transits, right? And so it won't be a sort of neat linear process and just March being, oh, just a great month and da 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 da. You know, it's like, yeah. But, you know, many of you are already experiencing, you know, this sort of roller coaster of emotions and these sort of triggering experiences, you know, being at these crossroads. And it's a part of this collective energetic process, you know, of release and reflection and then some renewal and rebirth. And that will extend, you know, into April throughout Aries season, okay? And so this mix of experiences and emotions, you know, being a bit of a roller coaster is punctuated by transits at the beginning of the month, for example, where we begin March still in Pisces season, right, with Mercury entering Pisces as well on March 7th, where it's going to make a conjunction with Saturn in this critical degree of exiting Aquarius and entering into Pisces, right? And this is going to be that energy, you know, of like some emotional, but also some sober analysis and reflection about the past and, you know, your future. And on this very same day, you know, this 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 sort of uh, dualistic energy, right? It's also punctuated by the fact that on this same day, Venus in Aries makes a conjunction with Jupiter in Aries at 12 degrees, while Jupiter is in this sort of two degree looming conjunction with Chiron, you know, and Chiron is the wounded karmic healer, right? And so this is happening and sort of setting the energy these first two weeks of March, right? Until that uh, conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron becomes exact on March 12th, right? And so this puts this emphasis, right, on potentially being emotionally triggered and having to transmute these like painful emotions and experiences and, you know, trying to see and accept and hold on to the higher wisdom that these experiences in the past and the present have brought you, right? And so from the beginning, March 2nd, through the full moon on the 7th, and through the end of the full moon weekend, which ends with that Jupiter and Chiron conjunction on the 12th, we have Venus and Mercury's conjunctions with Jupiter and with Saturn and the full moon illuminations, which connects with Uranus and Mars, sort of gifting you news and insight or an experience that is perhaps surprising, emotional, and sobering in a sort of spectrum of lighthearted or devastating ways, right? But to ultimately bring you closure of some sort, right? So that you accept the truth of something and um, be emotionally and spiritually liberated to strategize how to move forward, right? It, and it, this could happen in a number of ways. It could be um, a conflict an apology or reconciliation attempt that you never thought you'd get from a parent, a family member, or an old twin flame, right? Um, situations with a boss, and even an opportunity to, you know, consider your personal boundaries, your personal ethics, and your desires, right? And really be empowered in enforcing your boundaries and moving towards your desires in the future. It could be news about a mentorship or a partnership that has lucrative long-term benefits 
or it could be news of a conflict, right, related to boundaries being crossed and issues with ethical values and beliefs in relationships, right? This is energy that it could even bring you like a surprise marriage proposal, right? It could be even a financial gift or a financial proposition. It could also be news about an opportunity to learn and travel. This Jupiter and Aries transit is so duly connected to uh, learning and traveling in higher education, right? And so with these placements, March 3rd, 3-3, Right, is also an, an auspicious day to take action and initiate an opportunity for yourself by being optimistic, looking your best, and having an important meeting or shooting your shot, and generally taking some important step toward some larger dream and, and steering your destiny. It's a good day for lighting a seven-day prayer candle and being in ritual to release old energy and to ground and welcome in new energy, right? For the next seven days, from March 3rd through March 10th, three days before and after the full moon on March 7th. And, you know, a time to really connect with your guides, the great mother who presides over the grace of Saturn. We are all about the divine feminine and the great mother here and for connecting with your higher self. So during that time, definitely spend time visualizing, downloading, and speaking what you truly desire for your life, especially because with the full moon astrology, we have the sun in Pisces making a harmonious connection with Uranus and Taurus while it's also illuminating the moon in Virgo, right? Making the full moon uh, sort of sextile with Uranus, right? And with that in the mix, it really suggests high spiritual, psychic, and creative energy um, and surprises, right? But the thing is, is that it squares Mars suggesting you know possible conflict and even a uh, fire-based natural disasters um literally in terms of what this degree um is associated with right so take note of your own surroundings and the news around the full moon time related to fire-based natural disasters and um any sort of fire-based emergencies um so for more information on the full moon astrology and how it will be affecting your sign, take a look at the video posted on the channel for more details on how to really work with the energy of this Virgo full moon this week. Okay, so this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures initiated at the beginning of the month will really continue and build through mid-March between the 11th and the 17th with a number of emotional roller coaster transits, right, including that Jupiter Chiron conjunction until we reach the energetic shift and the rebirth, right, of the new year and the new moon in Aries and the spring equinox, March 19th and onward through the last two weeks of the month, okay? But let's discuss that week, that tricky week of March 11th through the 18th, okay? So we have the um, 11th being a day where there is a sextile between Venus and Aries and Mars and Gemini, and then Mercury and Pisces making a sextile with Uranus and Taurus, okay? And um, this is a Saturday that's actually really good for initiating important conversations, um, coming to agreements and resolves, possibly in your favor with any conflicts, from having increased confidence and resolve about what it is that you actually desire um, as a sort of result or um, resolve with some sort of situation. It could be, you know, um, you doing spiritual, creative, and psychic energy work, 
um, it's definitely a good weekend for energy healing where people may be receiving um, energetic upgrades right in their um, physical emotional and spiritual bodies okay and then you know this then the next day is that Jupiter conjunct Chiron right and that is that sort of dynamic energy and um, but to be quite honest, this Jupiter conjunct Chiron energy could bring so many different things. It could bring, you know, some sort of um, trajectory defining news or experience, right? Um, it could be some sort of breakthrough, truly, in a number of ways. And um, definitely look at that Jupiter and Aries video to see um, more about this, okay? But it's also giving, you know, long lost twin flame, reaching out to you, all kind of things could be happening with that, all right? And then from the 13th through the 17th, we have a little bit of a doozy here with the Sun and the Mercury. Sun, not the Mercury. Sun and Mercury <laughs> and Neptune all making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Pisces and then all squaring Mars and Gemini okay and um, then we have Venus in Aries um, squaring Pluto and sextiling Saturn right and Venus is also moving into Taurus in the midst of this too right so this is definitely climactic and uh, frustrating energy, right? And any conflicts that are sort of looming, things sort of reaching a, uh, a boiling point, a point of illumination and being at a crossroads and potential climax, right? This could be stalemates and conflicts being gaslit or emotionally manipulated by people like co-workers, friends, siblings, partners in love and or work, even teachers and classmates, right? Um, given that this is Mars and Gemini. So this could definitely be, you know, these encounters with, you know, people refusing to be accountable and honest about their deception or passive aggression. Um, and, you know, being in situations where you really have to seek to maintain emotional mastery and where people you know on on all sides might be uh, you know not trying to compromise their beliefs in some matters where they feel that there is some distrust in the midst and there's tensions around you know values and you know these matters may or may not be involving assets and property ownership and you know um People just trying to argue their case about what they believe they deserve, right? And it just really can be emotionally triggering and confusing. Um, and, you know, where you may be confused about what best actions to take. And that just ble bleeding over into all areas of your life. Feeling confused in your daily routines. What to do in these interactions. And even questioning your goals and your direction in life. And... You know, it's just emotional meltdown energy. And, you know, these experiences could interfere with other more creative and uplifting ways you desire to use your time, energy, and attention. You know, especially because, again, it's this mix of opportunity, um, you know, in addition to just emotional turmoil. And so the advice with these uh transits right during the middle of the middle of march is you know mercury is going to be squaring mars but it's also going to be sextiling pluto and then venus is going to be squaring pluto but it's going to be sextiling saturn right and so karma is really involved here and cosmic order and you know there is a sort of advice here to take your time and responses if you can you know respond to things after or around you know the new moon and really stick to facts and be calmly assertive if you must engage stand your ground and resolve something um there's a higher chance of being more empowered emotionally stable um and supported in steering your outcomes um later right and then um also, 
wait, disengage, and also don't take bait, you know, um, being baited into any sort of emotionally manipulative circumstances. And, you know, with people who you just no, are just not going to be honest and take accountability, right? If you can, if there is some situation where you can, go around, talk to higher-ups, talk to senior managers, right? Because it's, it's really this tricky energy um, where it's like, either you're going to wait, either you're going to be able to handle things with emotional calm, or you're going to disengage, or you're going to want to burn it all down, okay? <laughs> so... You know, that's that's really the mix, right? So um, when Venus enters into Taurus, you know, we'll begin to feel a bit more grounded. Um, there'll be more of a focus on pleasure, self-care, beauty, comfort, and, you know, thinking about your financial security and stability. With Venus entering into Taurus and um, there being that square with Pluto and sextile with Saturn, this could mean a number of things. Um, someone could be trying to earn your love or your business um, by showing you how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer. And this could just be energy of resolving some financial, legal, and even tax disputes and making some sort of financial decisions in the interest of your long-term best interests, right? This could be dealing with banks. This could be dealing with, you know, just institutions. This could be um, having business negotiations, right? And in general, this sort of configuration there is definitely giving something related to fintech, digital banking, digital currencies, cybersecurity with digital banking. Um, I'm thinking that this could even be a time where we hear something on the FTC decision on non-competes, right? Um, definitely check out that Saturn and Pluto video um, regarding some of the predictions that I had related to the astrology and how that's going to manifest in politics and governmental things, right? And in general, related to that, um, this astrology could mean a number of things in terms of global and political events. And I just want to touch on really quickly the Mercury and Venus conjunctions at the beginning of the month, and um, then all of this energy that then transpires the remaining of the month. It could illuminate. Um, you know, a lot of news about national leaders, like some sort of breaking news, right, about a national leader. Um, this could be a time where there is more aid that is able to reach earthquake victims. Um, there could be more national news coverage and discussion about um, consensus being reached um, and acknowledgement about the chemical and gas leak origins of COVID. Um, that's kind of in the air as a sort of controversy. And then there's also controversies of Korea's nuclear bomb testing drills with the U.S. That could uh, get more attention in the news. And uh, especially given that the full moon is emphasizing something related to fire um, and maybe um, natural disasters, just something, something with fire, right? And, and uh, certain things in the news just gaining a lot of traction and attention, right, with these Mercury and a Jupiter conjunctions and the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, Jupiter and Chiron, and all of these things, right? So there could also even be anger and outrage in current legal battles and the pending decisions around student loan forgiveness in the U.S. and just more continued issues related to education in the news in general. And this is courtesy of, you know, the square with Mars and Gemini that is being highlighted in those um, configurations. All right. So now let's get to the last two weeks of March. Okay. So we have Mercury um, and the sun entering into Pisces on the 19th through the 20th. And then that new moon in the spring equinox at the critical zero degrees, right? Happening on the 21st. And, you know, this is a major new moon because of the critical degree 
because it's also in a sort of loose conjunction with Mercury and Neptune, and also sextiling Pluto in that critical degree as it's entering Aquarius, right? And so um, it's really that energy that brings in all the newness. Um, it's a powerful new moon for manifestation, confident action, right? And so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we'll discuss more about the new moon astrology and how to best work with the energies and um, any particular predictions for the signs, right? And so in the meantime, take a look at the video that goes into more detail about the Pluto and Aquarius transit, right? How that's going to be powerfully changing things since that new moon is going to be aspecting Pluto and Aquarius, okay? And then on the 25th, just two days after Pluto entering Aquarius, we got Mars finally changing signs, entering Cancer after being in Gemini for seven months. And this is a welcome energetic change, but Mars does not like being in Cancer, okay? And Mars in Cancer is also a recipe for emotionally manipulative energy. Um, and passive aggressive behavior. But the thing is, is that there can perhaps be more emotional tolerance in your dealings with people, right? And you being able to sort of channel your um, emotions um, to reach outcomes and results that you desire, right? In your communication. And then um, between the 26th and the 28th, we have Mercury um, in Aries um, becoming visible and then also making a conjunction with Jupiter. And this means that it is such a great time for starting new things, launching new things. It's great for marketing. This could be a time where you're receiving great news, clarity, right, on your directions with long-term goals and plans even. You could be receiving information related to visas or spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation, or even study or work abroad opportunities, right? And um, I mentioned in my Jupiter and Aries video that this could be a particular conjunction where there are perhaps some announcements with more countries instituting nomad visas. Um, and then this energy is good for submitting applications and pitches and receiving news on applications and pitches and generally a great time to put your best foot forward and make long-term plans but also to you know be confident and enterprising but also realistic in your plans and to understand that there could be unforeseen circumstances that arise um, that you may not be able to plan for immediately right so don't overcommit don't overpromise um, do what you can with what you can with what you know <laughs> but this mercury and aries conjunction with jupiter is happening as jupiter is also becoming invisible right so again there could be unforeseen news and circumstances right and then we end the month with mars and cancer trining saturn and pisces and venus and taurus conjuncting uranus okay so this is um the Mars and Cancer trine with Saturn and Pisces in particular is really about being able to channel and express your emotions and ideas to reach people in an effective way and to really kind of attract outcomes and long-term results that you desire in your work and love relationships and in your career, right? And um, it's just, it's good for emotional stability and emotional determination and resolve with something, right? Cancer is a cardinal water sign, right? And Saturn and Pisces is a sort of stabilizing influence, right? For thinking about how to make your dreams a reality, okay? And then with the Venus and Taurus conjunction with Uranus, this is surprises, right? This could be surprises in finances and relationships. So it's definitely good for making sure that you're aware of your budget um and um this is also energy where you can meet new people um where you could get new ideas about something creative right um and that you could do business-wise uh related to fashion beauty 
the beauty industry, um, even music, um, something creative, right? And so, you know, Uranus is all about um, innovation and um, getting ideas, right? And then one of the things I forgot to mention is that, you know, both of these, Mars and Cancer trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus conjunct Uranus, it's like this could even be like break up and make up energy, right? And then being stronger in the long run from learning some kind of lesson, right? So it'll be really interesting to just keep a watch on kind of what transpires for you synchronistically along this time. We're going to get more things moving into Taurus. Um, so definitely... Uh, Take note of anything related to finances and relationship that begins to kind of sprout, you know, in your life around this time. And so, so to wrap up this collective reading, um, I received some channeled angel number messages um, as some spiritual advice, right? And the numbers that I got were 1133, which breaks down to eight, um, and the number 511, right? And eight in particular and 511 are really sort of emphasizing that March and also what these transits are really saying is that it's a month of renewed karma, that your actions have the potential to renew your karma, right? In a number of ways, it could end karmic cycles, um, but it could also even extend certain karmas, right? Depending on your actions. And so um, that's also what Saturn and Pluto are really all about, okay? So it is just being really emphasized here. So I'm gonna read the um, sort of spiritual understanding of the angel number 511. And a five is a number that is all about making positive life choices and important changes and about personal freedom. And it's about having to be adaptable and resourceful and to stay motivated to make progress. And similarly, the angel number one and master number 11 are also, you know, these numbers that all there are all about portals of newness and beginnings, um, inspiration, and, you know, um, manifesting, right? It's about spiritual awakening and development and about us connecting to our higher selves and our divine life purpose and soul mission. And so 511 is this message from the angels, from the divine, about the auspicious changes and new beginnings in your life. These changes have come about through your intentions and actions to better your life and incorporate a more spiritual approach. This is also a directive to incorporate a more spiritual approach, I'm getting, right, as you deal with any of these um, circumstances that surface during this time of karmic closure, right? And so the angels encourage you to make changes per your soul's promptings and intuitive urgings. 511 suggests that some karmic life changes are ahead and occurring in your life right now. And so your angels angels want you to remain courageous and positive throughout these transitions they support and surround you with love and healing and this number appears when it's a message that your intentions are manifesting rapidly right and that is absolutely related to um pluto being an aquarius and Saturn being in Pisces, right? So therefore keep your thoughts and focus positive and optimistic, maintain a positive attitude about the changes happening in your life. And it says old and negative habits, patterns and beliefs are being replaced with new, more positive ones. And this attracts and manifests further positive energies and opportunities for you. Go with the flow. Okay, so that is the sort of spiritual advice for the collective. And we're going to now get into your personal horoscopes and tarot psychic spiritual advice for the month. Dear Aries, this is a big month for you, okay? It's a big month, and that goes without saying, but, you know, your horoscope highlight for February was this message of 
paying attention to who and what pays you. And this month, because the mystical and spiritual energy is so potent for you, because of these big transits involving these major planets of blessings and karma and personal empowerment in your spiritual, your identity, and your money houses, it is especially important, okay? There's something really spiritual about the sun, Mercury, and Neptune making this conjunction and squaring Mars for you this month, right? Where we also have Venus and Mercury conjuncting with Jupiter in your first house, in the sign of Aries, right? And truly all the transits this month, right? And, you know, they are a spiritual test for you truly of mind over matter, where the universe in a sense is testing your spiritual self-mastery, right? And the law of attraction, how much you've mastered it, right? Whether you channel your energy into the things that keep your karma clear and that build your future wealth, or whether you channel your energy into any old ego dramas and traumas and emotional spirals that you could be baited into, all right? The, the divine is making it the sort of litmus test for closing out this tough karmic cycle for you that you have been in for 15 plus years, to be quite honest. And, you know, for granting you certain manifestations, you know, this Neptune and Mars square has been uh, really tough. The Saturnian age uh, rulership that I mentioned has been particularly tough for you as a cardinal sign, right? And, um, you know, as the planet of karma, Saturn and Pluto and everything sort of moving through your sign this month, this powerful new moon literally in that critical zero degree is about the divine really wanting to truly reward you, right? And to grow what you give energy and attention to starting this month, especially if you have had any, um, any blocks or you felt like things have been moving slow, Right, and so again, the divine will truly reward and grow what you give it energy and attention to this month. Whether you let lack, pain, or anger triggered by injustices and any deception that is revealed, you know, and connected to the past, whether you let it draw you into any ego battles, arguments, and emotional spirals, and into questioning your identity and your truth and your vision or whether you ghost it and focus on your goals and abundance that you're building, giving the universe the sign that you have unconditional trust in them, right? And what it is that you are co-creating with them also, right? And, you know, last month, um, you know, we also had all of these uh, planetary movements because we're in Pisces season, right? There's so much still in your 12th house and um, beginning to move into your first house. And, you know, so your relationship to how much you prioritize others and share of yourself with others, you know, is still continuing to change in a deep and necessary way for you to practice a really sacred selfishness, right? And, um, you know, it's about, you know, you having a desire to invest time and attention to your internal world, your personal spirituality and creativity, any fitness and financial goals, any changes you want to make um, in your in your appearance, in your life, like just all of these things, right? And it's like um, balancing this focus on spiritual self-care, you know, daily routines and just continuing to reach powerful closure and emotional healing while you continue to focus on your solo projects and personal empowerment is what has been on the docket for you and what is still powerfully on the docket for you, right? And, you know, you're still continuing your efforts to transform, stabilize, and, 
you know, stay committed to practical plans related to your wellness, your career, and your financial goals, right? And how you plan to infuse art and wisdom from your healing journey, from, you know, your deep healing through continuing to learn astrology, right, into your creative careers, right? And to continue thinking about people, networks, and marketing strategies that can help your goals. And it's like, you know, Mars has been in Gemini. It's finally going to move into Cancer, but this is all about still continuing to really um, carefully analyze your networks and your mindfulness and communications and your relationship to writing and how you navigate any sort of conflicts, right? And, um, you know, your daily routines and how you want to best represent yourself to others and have your sort of work and affiliations and appearance really represent you, right? You're still in this process of just rebirthing and kind of coming back home to yourself and that Mars um, moving into cancer at the end of the month is going to continue a bit of that but things could peak for you in the following ways this month right it's like from uh the beginning of the month right the second um we have you know venus making this really beautiful conjunction to jupiter in your first house and it's just kind of giving you a boost of energy it's like it's it's a lightness right it's a lightness and it's a hope and um you just really recommitting to things and trying to continue falling deeper and deeper and deeper in love with yourself and um into this really strong and like unshakable sense of you know security in yourself and um you know with these conjunctions also with mercury and saturn um so these things happening in your 12th and your first houses and then the full moon illuminations and connections with uranus and mars in your second to third houses will also be bringing you, you know, maybe has already brought you some sort of illuminating news, maybe confusion, crossroads, some karmic climaxes and, you know, closures that are surprising, maybe even angering and emotionally triggering, but also sobering, right? Related to any financial plans, um, just your finances in general, your health and your work-life balance, writing and teaching projects, and also secret enemies and underhanded communications and dealings and deceptions with, you know, colleagues and people who you had relationships with just coming to the surface. Um, and um, maybe also issues, you know, with your daily routines, transportation and, you know, travel plans. They're just being a little bit of destabilization and and maybe even some uncertainty around these things right and it's it's possible to you know just have stalemates in some conflicts right and it's possible you could be you know continuing to face you know these situations where people are trying to gaslight you refuse to be accountable and honest about their intentions their deception and um you know, this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures is just powerful for you. And it will continue and build, you know, through mid-March, like I mentioned in the general um, astrology, you know, between the 11th and the 17th, you know, that being that chunk, that emotional roller coaster, right, until we reach the energetic shift for rebirth on the new year and the new moon in Aries and the spring equinox, right? And, um, you know, it's just, you could still be having a bit of uncertainty um, and feeling emotionally triggered and unsure, you know, related to experiences and conflicts of, you know, this journey of just trying to find closure, cut ties, move on from pain into, you know, this new beginning that's just really free from the ghosts and the traumas of the past and also any uncertainty in terms of like your finances, right? Just trying to stay focused in your power, your vision, 
your goals and balance and organize in your energy vibration and daily routines. Okay. And, um, you know, if you are dealing with any sort of conflicts, you know, um, again, I mentioned that your 12th house is like packed. Okay. It's packed. <laughs> and like, even though the Aries Collective will obviously have, you know, differences in terms of where they're at in their journey, on an astrological level, Aries have been having it hard, right? And so if you're experiencing any conflicts, anything where people are trying to bait you, where all kinds of things are coming to the light and it's like, um, you know, Karma is involved, right? And so if you take your time and any responses, you know, after or around, you know, this new moon, when we're firmly in your season and you, you know, either engage with a calm and assertive, you know, manner um, or just go around, you know, like people who are trying to bait you into conflict and just go to higher ups, managers, you know, um, all of these things, then things will resolve for you. You, It's also perfectly fine to kind of like ghost any situations with any like narcissistic, like abusive, like egoic people, people who just refuse to be accountable, all that stuff. It's like, if you know the truth, they know the truth and they're just refusing to be accountable. It's like, don't feed it any energy either. And it's like, that is a part of this test from spirit because it's like this is such powerful spiritual energy for you all in particular um in terms of what you give your energy to like really growing and being blessed that you know you can just put a shield of spiritual protection around you right and um quite literally speak what it is that you want what sort of resolve that you want what sort of closure you want with anything, right? Give it, surrender it to the divine for it to be handled. You know, if, you know, it would just lead you to some emotional instability or some sort of emotional spiral to deal with something, you know, silence says a lot, you know? So, um, by the last two weeks of March, you know, this again, this is this powerful new beginning for you, Venus entering into Taurus, right? Um, bringing a focus on continuing to take good care of yourself and to have your financial security and stability continue to be blessed. Um, and this is also a time where you could be getting more information on um, travel plans, right? As well, because we have Mars moving into Cancer, we have Mercury and Aries conjuncting Jupiter. Um, so much of this is about you all trying to make long-term plans related to some things, right? Um, but with the astrology and certain sort of karmic blocks, perhaps not having all of the resources or details that could make certain things transpire, right? And some of that is a part of divine timing with something. And um, that in general is just really, really potent and key for Aries, okay? And so the if you look at the cards here, right? So the top of this, right, is just kind of like the cards were mirroring everything that was uh, coming through to me just very clearly as this psychic message for you all to just really, really focus, mind the business that pays you, right? And that is highlighted here by this king of pentacles, right, at the top of the reading. And, um, you know, this person you all like just continuing to walk firmly surrounded and blessed by the divine towards your goals these things that you have for yourself and that you're building for yourself is what I want to say and to again right just not give any energy or attention to 
people who might be trying to um, bait you, who might be trying to distract you, try to get your attention, um, try to just be in your energy, find out things about you, um, <laughs> and uh, try to just try to get a rise out of you or even try to see the chances of being back in your orbit, right? And back in relationship with you. Um, and, you know, we have the four of pentacles here, right? Which is this other card similar to this page of emotions. It's like you all are the page of emotions. You're this eight of emotions. You're this person who's walking away from all of it you know, and continuing to kind of just keep to yourself and focus on yourself. But it's like, there are people who want your attention. If you look in the middle, right, it's like this King of Pentacles at the top, this Five of Wands right below it, and then the um, Six of Pentacles right below that, right? And it's like, you are asked to just focus your attention on your success, right? Seven of Wands, right? blocking and protecting your energy <laughs> and just continuing to focus on your emotional healing and renewal. Because again, you look at this bottom row, the wheel of fortune, the world justice is like, it is, it's, it's already done. You know, the ways that people have tried to play with you, the ways that people have tried to block you, the decisions that people have made and how they have handled you. It's like, they have made their decisions <laughs> with regards to their karma more than any actions that you could take in terms of how you handle them and engage with them, right? You don't need to say anything anymore. This is an era of you walking into just letting your work, letting your, your looks, letting how well you take care of yourself, letting how, um, just letting your energy speak for you, right? And the ways that the divine has sort of gotten you through <laughs> some seemingly insurmountable challenges be the testament of how blessed you are and will continue to be. And that be the biggest thing that speaks, right? And it's, it's, it's confusing to a lot of people right now. And that's also what I'm getting from this is like how you're doing, what you're doing and what you're doing <laughs> and how you're getting along with or without people is speaking volumes, right? It's speaking volumes. It's speaking volumes. It's just speaking volumes and that is also a part of like Saturn you know being in the 12th house now it's like this is about you building in silence and in co-creation with the divine it's handled okay and then of course right so much of this is just about you continuing to hold your vision right and um Trust all the knowledge and the lessons that you have been given, okay? And moving forward, definitely check out the rest of the videos that are linked for more on how these big uh, planetary movements like Saturn's interest into Pisces, which is your 12th house, and how Pluto's entry into your 11th house are going to be um, really opening up a lot of opportunity for you. And speaking of that, in terms of the... Um, Oracle advice cards that we got for you. We have opportunity is one of the cards that came out here and outcome. All right. And so it says um, not to be too attached to a specific outcome in any new situation. The possibilities are open ended. Anything might happen. Try not to prescribe a fixed outcome within your mind as this may limit your availability to access the infinite scope of possibilities sent to guide you in the best possible direction. And again, this gets back to the fact that, you know, the message that I got at the top, like was that what you pay attention to, what you focus 
your intention on, whether you hold high optimistic intentions and send this message of unconditional trust and belief in everything that you're doing, like to the divine, it's like they are heeding that. And it's, it's critically a part of like your manifestations and your new beginning right now in your life. Okay. So much about, so much of this is about your mindset. Okay. And then opportunity it says this card speaks of new opportunities, although they may not necessarily come in the form that you are expecting. Be alert. Look beyond the obvious. Be prepared for opportunities disguised as loss. If a new pathway opens for you, trust that it is leading you in the direction that you are meant to go. Absolutely. That is absolutely happening. Um, one of Saturn's biggest lessons for the Aries Collective is how, um, you know, failure and divine redirection <laughs> and rejection is such protection. Like, on so many levels, on so many levels. Like, in the ways of, like, keeping you out of harm's way in ways that you would have never foreseen. Like, I think if a lot of you look back at the direction that you were heading towards before the pandemic and um, look at where you're heading now, who you are now, the wisdom that you have now, how um, you could have got stuck in certain relationships, um, industries, networks, all kinds of things, been feeding into systems with evil and dirty money, like all kinds of things. It's like you have been rerouted. Divine detours. The devil is in the detail, but the divine is in the detour. Okay. So Continue to reflect, continue to just stay grateful for everything that you are, everything that you have, and look for the lessons in everything, in everything. All right. <laughs> so I hope that this was helpful. Definitely give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel to keep up with your UA Light Celestial Insight and to join us here every day for our daily grace meditations for motivation and heart activation, okay? Especially if you are struggling with daily routines, a gratitude practice could be something that could just be really helpful. And so that's what these are for, all right? Take good care of your hearts.